I forgot they had that here. We'll have to take him on it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, whoa. So that thing just drives through the mall, huh? <laughs> yeah, he drives all the way around. He's, he hears it, he just doesn't know what to think about it. <laughs> I'm sure he would freak out if he was able to get on it and see it. Alright, so we are out and about hunting down New York Comic Con Pops. We have a busy weekend ahead of us. After we're done hunting for Funko Pops, we're going to get our stuff together and head down south to Indiana Toy and Comic Expo. But right now, as we shop, we are just looking for DC, The Simpsons, and Harry Potter. Those are our main gets right now that we're going after. And we're gonna start off with FYE, but before we run into FYE, we actually saw a really cool arcade store. Oh my gosh. Well, not a store, but you just go in and yes. play arcades. I mean, they had all kinds of fun stuff in there. I haven't seen one of those in a long time, so it's really cool to see that. And if you guys are into arcades, we, next week, probably, yes. or the week after for the review, we'll be getting the Ninja Turtle um, one of Hopefully, arcade. we so will be getting that. It hasn't hit our state yet. It hits no. our state the 21st, and we will have one in our hands by then, hopefully. So anyways, let's head into FYE. Oh, FYE has a sample. They got oh, yeah. Mr. Burns. Let's check that out. Double up if we have to. Yes. You never know what shipping you're going to get. That's true. Success! We have a Vampire Mr. Burns. Actually, this is our second one mm -hmm. because we ordered one online the night before just to make sure. I didn't know what kind of shape it was going to come in. You know how this goes now yes. with pop collecting. Yes. Paint jobs, yada, yada, yada. And the Simpsons line is the most important line that we're collecting right mm -hmm. now. I got to have them all, so I got to make sure I get a good one. Got to catch them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I like this pop. I think it's really great. Honestly, this is probably one of my favorite pops that they came out with this year for the con. Immediately when I thought of Treehouse of Horror, this was one of the ones yeah. that I thought right away is like, Mr. Burns is a vampire. Yes. That would be perfect. Brom, Stokers, Mr. Burns. <laughs> like, it would look great. <laughs> and this one did. Even the skin tone looks dead. I know. That's what I thought when I first saw it in hand. I was like, ooh, this thing is creepy. I really like it. I, like, I love how they've captured just so much of what's from the show. Yeah, and they continue to do it in the Treehouse of Horror. Yeah. So I love that Funko has now attacked The Simpsons again. It makes me so happy. I this hope is they keep line, expanding this. Yes, this is a line I am very excited about. Now, they did have a Blunt Man and Chronic 2-pack. I kind of wanted it. But at the same time, we are in the must-have zone right now. We have limited space. <laughs> yes, limited space. So we have to be very critical on what we collect. So we had to turn it down, even though I kind of really wanted it. But, you know, we had to wave it by. Now, when we were leaving the store, though, we did run across the Funkoverse. The Funkoverse uh, board game, basically, yes. the Funko board game, was out in full effect this mm -hmm. weekend as well. And uh, we took a look at it. We haven't played it yet, but it looks really cool. I thought the box art was really done They're well. They're super cool. I, I honestly want to buy one of these and play. But the thing is, it's just going to be the two of us playing and Alex <laughs> stealing the yeah. pieces. So So if you play that, let us know if that's something fun. Maybe we should pick up. Yeah, Harry Potter, Golden Girls. Yeah, there we go. There's the little strategy game ones too. Mm -hmm. Let's go. What you doing? <laughs> Whoa. So up next we're heading to Think Geek because I really want to get the Suzy pop and there are a few other pops there that we really want to see in person. There's Suzy. There's Suzy, yeah. This thing's creepy looking. Ew, that's so creepy. Suzy, look, man, that thing, it actually looks really cool. I can't tell if it's dust on her lenses or if it's like black speckles on her lenses. I don't know. Doesn't look like a very good paint job. Sorry. Look at her hands. They're so wrinkly and gross. They look like old lady hands. Yeah, that's kind of rough, don't you think? It's very rough. This one's sold out online. I got plenty of them in store, though. Here's the one I wanted to look at. Look at this thing. Oh my gosh, it's so shiny. Isn't that crazy? I love that, yeah. It's like diamonds. Very, very cool sculpt. I, I cannot spend money on the way her hands look. I just cannot do it. 
they all look wrinkled and old and lines all through them. Best. Yeah, I don't know. They don't look that great, do they? No. Look at that. The skin tone's completely off on that one. There's just something about it. I don't know. I just don't really care for it. I don't know about that one. I'm actually really, really impressed with this. That's a really good paint job, too. Look how cool that is. That's just really neat. Mm -hmm. He's cool. He's very creepy. I like he that. He hits everywhere he's supposed to hit. Yeah. And, of course, this is really cool. Oh, yeah. But, I don't know. I think the dark paint, if you can even see. Is that cereal? No, t-shirt. I was like, is that cereal? Yeah. Nick Fury was kind of... Kind of plain, but, you know, what mm -hmm. it's supposed to be. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that one. I'm not wasting money. I will forever look at her fingers and be annoyed by that. Okay, so a few things. I'm disappointed in the quality of Susie. Once I got her in my hands, I was like, oh, I love this. And then I got to looking, and there were some, like, black speckled issues with her glasses, the mold of her hands. <laughs> oh, my gosh, it's awful. And I think I looked at at least ten different pops. I could yeah. not find one where her hands didn't look mangled or mismatched, and there were a lot of problems with the paint apps. I Rough, just, right? I, I just couldn't find one I liked. I couldn't waste my money on something that I felt wasn't up to par. Yeah, and maybe we'll be able to find her in another yeah, store, maybe. better quality control. Yeah. I don't know how that happened. But I do want to say, we did the ones that we just wanted to look at, not mm. collect, wow. Uh, Slim looked awesome. Creepy cool. I loved that one. The airbrushing, the sculpt, the detail. Mm -hmm. That was a great looking pop. If you were looking for that pop, yeah. you were not disappointed with no, that at, at all. all. That was an awesome pop. I would have got it if I wasn't being so critical right now on the pops <laughs> I'm collecting. Um, also, the butt stallion was butt an amazing was cool. looking pop. I don't know what they did to it to make it have that sort of hologram look to it, I but either. I was impressed. Also, in retrospect, we should have picked up the Daria. We should have. It would have gone great with our Beavis and Butthead. But at the same time, ugh. I was going on and on and on about Susie. So it kind of, you know, <laughs> threw us off our game. Yeah. Alrighty, so up next is Hot Topic, where we need a Huntress, a second Evil Willy, and possibly a Mad Max scene for you. Here we need the Huntress. Yeah. And then probably Evil Willy. I might double up just to make sure. Yeah, in case I get it. In case I get it in the mail and it's all trashed. Oh boy. Hardcore music again. <laughs> and pause. Awesome, but the boxes are really bad. Good. <laughs> I don't know the shape of that box. It's the same size as a regular pop box. Oh. Did you want that one? It's kind of plain. Great looking pop. I love it. The bright colors. It's so the vivid. Box art. The box art is beautiful. This is long, long overdue. A main character, a mainstay yes. in DC. I'm surprised it took this long. But mm. Boy, they did not disappoint. Not at all. And they took this long. Amazing pop. Let's take a look at it. Honestly, the colors of this, I truly can appreciate. I love that purple. It's so bold. It's so vivid. Her hair is beautiful, and her costume is so simple, yet so detailed. It's just honestly one of my favorite pops that they've come out with. I know I already said that about a, about a couple, but this <laughs> one is true. I, I have so many favorites this year once I saw them in store and got them, and this one just doesn't disappoint. Great pop. Beautiful colors, like you said. Yeah. This is why I like the comic pops more than the movie pops, because when you think of comic, you think of graphic art, yes. you think of bright colors. Bold colors. And that is exactly what we have in The Hunter. So big win for us as DC fans. As far as Maxine, the box size was pretty neat, but I just wasn't that impressed with the pop when I, once I saw it. Yeah. Um, I might have to just wait for a sale on that one, because I kind of want 25 it, bucks. But 25 yeah. bucks for that pop. It's kind of one of those things. It's just like, meh. But I think it'll go on sale. We did get to see the Frozen 2 line. Yes. Frozen 2 was obviously being released at the same time. 
Some of those were pretty impressive. The Earth Giant comes to mind because when we took it off the shelf, that thing is heavy. It is solid. <laughs> I'm like, this is a rock. Legitimately it's a, a rock. rock. <laughs> and it's as heavy as a rock. Yeah. I kid you not. If you see that in the store, just pick it up and feel the weight of that thing. Mm -hmm. Look at this thing. The water knock. Oh, I guess it's something we're going to learn about in the new movie. It's crazy. This she's is cool looking. Like so Lily. this is a giant rock. Mm -hmm. Feel how heavy that is. It is a rock. It's like a pound. Now we also picked up a second Evil Willy, an Evil Groundskeeper Willy. This is another one that I thought if I was going to pick one for a con exclusive mm -hmm. hollow, around Halloween, smart Funko doing this, Treehouse of Horrors for the New York Comic Con, it would have been Evil Groundskeeper Willy. I guess it's one of the more popular episodes mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Uh, so I loved this one. This one was great. I'm glad I bought a second one though because the first one's paint job was a, it was a, little, a little harsh. But man, this is a great looking pop. Mm -hmm. I just am glad we're getting a willy to begin with because I was kind of yeah. worried we were going to get a willy. But hopefully we do get a regular one too. But great looking pop. I love it. I love the Freddy. I was going to say that. Willy. That's so cool. It's just a great pop. I love this one. This is one of my favorite pops actually. Up next is Barnes & Noble to get my must have this year, which is Filch. <laughs> it's like summer. It's like spring when everybody's excited. War. I feel like I've seen that before. Hello. Donald is so cute. I feel like I've seen this before. Hmm, deja vu? Deja vu. I do need another one, but I'm not gonna get it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm telling you, Mark, I cannot stand the way they are molding these hands. Yeah, that's not so bad though. It's not as bad. That yeah, one's pretty cool. He's super cool. Hey, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> He's like, I want this one. Yeah, look at her hair. That's crazy. That mm -hmm. must have been a like heck snakes. of a sculpt. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh. This one's got the better paint job of the four. Alright, well, let's go uh, look around. I love this one. It's so awesome. The pop is great. Mrs. Norris is perfect. Honestly, all the pops were looked pretty good. Except the Green Hornet 2-pack, <laughs> I'll say. Again, it bothers me. It just bothers me because I am a Green Hornet fan. I wanted the 2-pack, but it's pretty much the same as all the other ones. It's yeah. like, why are you doing that to me? Also, they didn't have a Keith Haring in this store. No. So I wanted to collect the artist line. I was surprised they didn't have it. There's no way that he sold out there. I don't think yeah. the store got it, to be honest with you. God. But So that was kind of a bummer. Also, I did look at Jean-Michel on Foot Locker's website, but they were charging more for the pop than normal places were, plus their high shipping. That became an expensive pop. So this artist line is not starting off well for me. Okay, so let's take a look at Filch. Filch is one of my favorite characters in the movie because he's so awkward and weird, but he's great. And they really captured the age marks on his face with the lines around his eyes and the bags underneath them. And I love how he's holding Mrs. Norris. That cat is so evil in the movie and they have those evil red eyes, which I truly can appreciate. And then they have his coat and everything else and he just looks perfect, honestly. This is one of my favorite Harry Potter pops that they've come out with in really? a long time. Yes. So I, I do think that every year they come out with a good Harry Potter exclusive. I think Mad Maxine was more of just kind of a throne because maybe it was an experience character people wanted and mm -hmm. stuff. I just think as far as pops, it doesn't really um, like look great because there's not much there yeah like where you look at filch where he has you know characteristics that make him interesting well, the thing about him and even looking at this pop it makes me think about like in the movie when he has that weird gait that strange walk and i, <laughs> I can see that when looking at this pop i'm just like that is totally him sign of a successful sculpt i yes. guess now after we grabbed filch naturally we had to take a look around i still have his backpacks mm, look at the window one yeah i still have the the fox one. Yeah, the fox, the San Diego Comic Con. Mm-hmm. I like it. <gasps> oh, it's a mandrake. That's oh. so creepy. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's those fuck racers. I've never seen these yet. <laughs> See that? Oh, they're cute. <laughs> <laughs> Keep telling myself. You don't want to buy the office pops. You don't want to. No, because you're, you're just going to open the jacket. Just I know. I know. I got, I got the Dwight from Amazon. I'm happy. These office pops are killing me. They're killing me. <laughs> I want them all so bad. I love the office. Mm. I, I just don't have the space for them. So I have to be 
what do I want most? What office pop, if there was one, would I want the most? Do I? And I think one <laughs> did come out. I think one did come out to Amazon, and we did pick that up. That is Dwight Schrute with Dwight Schrute, the bobblehead. Mm -hmm. So I think this was probably the first season. Is that one that she got him the do the bobblehead? I, I can't. I think, think it was the first so. season, if I'm not mistaken. But this one was probably Dwight at his best, in my opinion. I think so. Like, when this happened, this was when Dwight was Dwight. You know, he kind of... I felt like he changed his attitude throughout the series yeah. and got kind of different here and there, but prototypical Dwight, season one. I am so happy they made this one. And I think this one's good. There are a few other Dwights I would collect in Mike. I really, I feel like Michael and Dwight were the... I don't know, man. I want them all. It's very hard for me. Honestly, it's, hard it's so me. hard because there are so many like scenes where you're just like, God, I really want that. I know, man. I love The Office so much. But yes, Dwight, great looking pop. Uh, I wish it was Bobblehead. Both of them Bobblehead. I'll say that. I know that that would go against... You never want Bobblehead, so that's weird. But I mean, this one would make this sense. One would make At sense. least the miniature Dwight being a Bobblehead would have been the, the ticket here. Kind of like what they did with Ant-Man and the Marvel Collector yeah. Box. It yes. would have been great. Uh, but other than that, I think it's a great looking pop. I love this. This is just so awesome. This was a great pop to have. And it will feed my uh, small office addiction right now for pops, even though I want Guys, them all. I want them all so just bad. Just be ready, because he's going to be like, I need all of these. <laughs> so before we left, we took a look at the lounge fly bags, because honestly, they continue to impress me, and I can't stop collecting them. Oh, that's cool. That is cool. That's right. I like the princess one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do you see a stitch? Donald one. Look at the stitch. I love it. But I love this more. Oh yeah, that Donald one. I like the handles. Like, I like the shape. Uh, it's um tough. Yeah, it's like a canvas. Mm -hmm. I like the that Jack Skellington one. Oh, check the. Who's that? The wig. Woody ones. Yeah. Sick. Those are cool. Oh, I like the Jack Skellington one. Oh, that's cool. Ooh, I like the Ursula. Ooh, 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 that's Upgrade. Speaking of Donald Duck, you're a big Donald Duck fan. We happened to run across the street to the Disney store in the mall and found the perfect Halloween outfit yes. costume for Alex. Last year was kind of a dud. We just had to do basic he Dracula. He was a vampire. Yeah, but this year we got something real so good. Cool. Show them what it is. It is a Donald Duck, guys. Look at this. <laughs> Isn't it cute? That and is then cool. the face. Look at the bill. It's great. <laughs> and it has like little mittens and then the butt has the duck tail. Isn't this the cutest <laughs> outfit you have ever seen in your life? Yeah. I love it so, so much. That one's going to be awesome. I think he's going to look awesome. we got to find some tights yes. for him and everything. And it was like 20 sweats. bucks. Yeah, 20 bucks. It was, it was super know. cheap. It was super, super cheap. And we did happen to see somebody in the Disney we store did. that watched the channel. We didn't have, we weren't recording at the time. But we do want to say a shout out to you. Thank you for coming up and saying Thank hi. You. Um, but yeah, uh, very successful Disney store, huh? Yes, we'll so say. much very fun. Very successful. All right, so that was our New York Comic Con Funko Pop hunting for mm -hmm. the day. Didn't eat a whole lot, but it was a successful day, I think. Uh, but now we are heading down to Bloomington, where we are our guests at Indiana Twain Comic Expo. Alrighty, so that was New York Comic Con, and that is over now. Our Funko Pop hunting for New York Comic Con is officially over. I thought it was pretty successful. We got what we wanted. Yeah. We were trying to stay within our limits here because we do have a weekend uh, at a con yes. here. So we are heading to Bloomington, Indiana for Indiana Twain Comic Expo, where we can hopefully unload some stuff, buy some new stuff, get them custom pops sold, and then meet some of you guys. So let's head that way. We'll see you in the hotel. Hey guys. Hi guys. Alrighty, so we are in the hotel. We're settled. We just got back eating dinner and everything. And I want to kind of go over a couple things before we cut through the con. I wanted to show you the lead up, basically, of what you're going to see next. Alex is, of course, a little in surprise visitor yeah, over here. Just pop it in and see what's going on, what <laughs> we're looking at. Uh, so, yeah, first off. Um, you saw that we made some custom pops for the con to sell, but we also made a few for some of our buddies here, actually. Now, one of them was our friend Pixel Dan. I'm sure you guys know him if you're in the toy community on YouTube. You watch any of the reviews here. You know who Pixel Dan is. So we've made three pops yes. for him so far. Yeah. Um, if you know him, you know he's a big Masters of the Universe fan. So we made Battle Armor He Dan. So I don't know. Let me see if you guys can see that. But he has his... <laughs> he's so flipping cool, guys. a little hard with the reflection. But if you look in there, you can see he has his microphone on there. His Pixel Dan microphone when he's interviewing people. And he's wearing the Battle Armor for uh, He Man. So yeah. very, very cool. <laughs> Makes sense. He Dan, He Man. And then on the back of it, you can see... <laughs> Those are all the ones we've made so far. So we made Mega Dan last time. 
So uh, don't mind Alex. He's he's ready to go to bed. It's, yeah, it's, it's my late. <laughs> um, up next, there's two guys that actually run this show. One named Chris. One named Billy. And they're they're good buddies. Yes. And um, I'll get to why they actually started it. But for now, Chris, he's a he's a really awesome guy. But he's he loves his Irish roots. Mm-hmm. Big Irish guy. Now we made one for him last uh, yeah last year. He really really wanted one, and I didn't make him one the first year because I didn't know about it actually. <laughs> I yeah, met Billy. Because we had done all of the stuff with Billy, and yeah. he was the one who kind of you know helped us with everything the first year. And then when we got here, we're like, oh, Chris is part Chris. of this too. Yeah, yeah. we can make him Chris. So uh, sticking to his Irish roots and uh, kind of stalking Facebook too because I'm kind of weird like that, you know. Everybody uh, stalks Facebook, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, so here he is. Chris and he's got his guitar and his Ireland shirt and then of course I did the Irish boxing colors on the back of it you can see Irish pride and then like the little art there on the side so this one was actually really really fun to make I think he's gonna like this one a lot oh I think he's gonna love it <laughs> so and then uh, what is he doing he's slamming slam- the door he's slamming doors to, to the refrigerator <laughs> yeah, you know, okay. like I said there is a reason that Indiana Twain Comic Expo came about when we met Billy and Chris I kind of found out that Billy, there's a mascot here. There's a dog named Reggie because he was a big Reggie Miller fan, him and his dad watching basketball. And he kind of told me basically that, you know, his dad was kind of the reason in a way that they started this. So um, for Billy, now I've made Billy. I've already made Billy a pop. And I made the dog, Reggie. Super Reggie. uh, Super Reggie. And uh, I I think he's going to like this one. He's going to love this one. You're going to make him cry. This one is his dad. So he has no clue I've made these. None of of them know I made it. I just made it Mm -hmm. for him. Uh, But this one's really cool. This is Pops right here. And so we got dad on the front and then his name on the sides. So this one, I was, I had a good time making this one. This is this awesome. one was really fun. one of my favorite ones you've ever made just yeah. because it's so That's his dad down there. Yeah. yeah, and then we have the whole crew there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Billy, Super Reggie, Chris, and then his dad. So this one was really, really, really fun to make. It just, <laughs> you know, he just seemed like uh, just a, a, a Hoosier, man, an Indiana guy. Man. Yes. Just a hard worker, put in the work, 9 to 5, came home, raised his family, just like a lot of people yeah. do here. So those are really, really fun to make. And I guess uh, we're going to go ahead and head to bed so we can get up early because yeah. we got to set all of our stuff up at like 6, 6.30 in the morning, something, something like ridiculous that. So, early. yeah, it's already pretty late. So. It's already almost 11 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, so little boy needs to be asleep. This is the longest he's ever stayed up, I think, oh, yeah. ever. He's He's never stayed up past like and he's on the phone now. 9.45. Is he calling I am, service? Pl- I am plugged in. Okay, that's a good, good idea. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. So we'll cut and see you guys in the con. All right, so we are loading up everything to go into the con to get our table ready. It's bright early in the morning, and it's a nice day outside. So let's go. Okay. Oh. Gifts here. Thank you. Oh, we got welcome. Chris and we got Billy. Hi, everybody. We wrapped it like it's Christmas. Yes. You go first. <laughs> Sorry about the bad wrap job. No, oh, this is better than mine. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> that is very cool. Thank you guys. You're welcome. You're very welcome. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is so cool. Nice. Thank you. Thank You're you guys welcome. so much. That is awesome. <laughs> very cool. His picture's on the back of it, too. Ha! Thanks, guys. So that was fun. That was super, super fun. Uh, we cut the camera off because we weren't really sure if that was weird, you know, uh, recording somebody when they're emotional. Yeah. It probably was, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, but it was awesome. His sister was standing right there beside him, and, you know, she got emotional, and, and you know, he's... he's I'm know, getting emotional thinking about it. I <laughs> had to go give guy. her a hug. So it, it went over really well. Um, also, though, what was really cool, and we didn't plan this, one of the artists that came to the show had a comic drawing uh, of sorts of his dad. That's a perfect counterpart for the pop that we made him. So that was super, super cool. More on that a little bit later down in this video. Up next is Dan. This will be his third pop that we made him, but I think this one might've been the funnest one we've done so far. Okay, we have Pixel Dan here. Everybody knows Pixel Dan. What's here up? is his present. Oh no! Yep. Again? Again. I like it's wrapped this time. It's wrapped because we're we're in it's... a Christmas festive mood. Oh, but it's I kind like of black, it. so we're sort of dark at heart. Oh, well, I mean, you know, Halloween. <laughs> yeah. Rolling into Christmas, they all blend together yeah, exactly. according to Walmart. So. <laughs> yeah. Well. And I'm a yeah. terrible rapper, so you know. No, this is better than I rap. Are you kidding me? <laughs> It'd be all bunched up and different things. All right. Oh my! Battle armor. He. <laughs> Holy cow, that is amazing. And I have a microphone as my yes, accessory. you have your <gasps> your new microphone, your That's, nice Oh yeah, it, nice. Oh, it's incredible, man. Alrighty. Oh, and I love it, there's, there's we got Mega it, Dan. We got the whole series The whole the series is there. Oh, 
This is amazing. Thank you so much. I love it. No problem at all. <laughs> so Dan, always full of smiles. Yes. Consummate professional. If you guys haven't checked him out, uh, definitely check his channel out. You guys probably have already seen him. Probably one of the most professional toy reviewers that we have here on YouTube. Great guy and great family too yes. if you don't know him outside of YouTube. All right, so now the doors are opening and we're about to get started. So I am still out here shopping at Indiana Toy and Comic Expo, and yep, Pop Shannon, a fan of the channel. Uh, tell us about your channel, here, Shannon. Hey, what's up, everybody? Sure, Shannon here from the Sure Shannon Show. Hey, my channel. I do a little of everything. It's a nice variety show. I do a little unboxing. I do a little cooking. I do I have special guests on my show. It's cooking, just a little. Huh? Yeah, I do a little cooking. You know, I did a matter of fact, I did an apple pie video. It's got like a thousand some views on there. We did a cookie well. video one time. Make Christmas cookies. Okay. It turned out terrible. Because we can't cook. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tried hard. It just didn't work. It just didn't work. So, if you got the cooking skills, cooking skills are fun to watch and you should learn that. So, guys, check out Shannon. I'll put his channel link down below and uh, give him a subscription. So far, this day is going great. We're getting to meet a ton of you. Megan, if you guys saw our video, I guess it's been a little it's while. A while. Uh, Megan was responsible for getting a hold of the snowy Bigfoot for us, going all the way to Canada, That's the great right. north to send one down to us. Um, so it was awesome meeting her and her mom. It, it was awesome, right? Yes. I mean, they were such totally awesome nice people. people. Big Joker fan, too, I found out. Yes! Had, had some Huge conversations Joker about fan. the Joker, which is awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, great meeting them. Also, thank you guys for the people that stood in line waiting for to buy the Definitely. custom pops, basically. That's great. Uh, many return buyers, too, from prior years. Even some that have bought every year yes. that we brought custom pops. So I want you guys to know that I am... Truly, truly appreciative of that. I really, really do appreciate the support. Sammy Terry and Bobby Nightmare pretty much sold out right away. Mm -hmm. And then we had three Rick Smiths left by the end of the day, which was expected because Rick Smiths was like one of my favorite basketball players and, you know, kind of odd for other choices. True. But, uh, Actually, but... someone did ask me, why did you choose Rick Smiths? And I was like, because it's, it's one of his favorites. <laughs> one of my favorites. I can't help it. Alrighty, so now we're going to go ahead and run through the con. We're going to have to cruise through it because yeah. we don't have a lot of time to do this to get back to our seat. Uh, but maybe something will catch our eye. So let's go. Like many toy shows, you're going to see a fair amount of Marvel Legends. This show is no different. But we also stumbled across a booth with signed pops. Some of them were really good, actually. We saw a Jason David Frank signed Lord Draken pop. A Beetlejuice signed by Michael Keaton, which was super cool. Imagine super if that cool. was Batman, too. That would, I mean, either way, it was awesome. <laughs> An Alice Cooper signed pop. And then a Chevy Chase Dorb's two-pack, which was kind of tempting because yes. that's a guy that, you know, he's, he's I guess he's one of my favorite actors. He's really a think classic about. actor he is, for our classic. childhood. Yeah, he's just classic, and it was cool. I didn't know he went to cons to sign pops, I guess. I know. Well, when I saw it, I was like, uh, babe, do you <laughs> yeah, see what yeah. I see? It was cool, man. I liked it. Now we also saw a fair amount of Mezco and Storm and NECA figures. We even saw an original Harley Quinn bombshell statue, which is something that's really hard to find these Super days. Super rare. Uh, that's kind of a rare one. One of their first ones ever. Actually, I think it was their first one. I think it was their first and one. And if you go and try to find that now, it's almost impossible. It's expensive. The Power Rangers Lightning Collection figures were also at this particular booth. I like this line, but I prefer the figure arts. But man, that Lord Zed looked awesome. few things about the Lightning Collection real quick I want to go into. Uh, I think the line looks really great, and I think for the price point of these figures, they've been really successful. I think they're good figures, but what worried me is what is Hasbro going to do with what used to be the Legacy line? Because that's what I collected, and I'm a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers fan, and that was something I was worried about. Now, granted, they've made just about everything, I think, but it could be upgraded, right? I mean, you can make better stuff. 
One of the things that sucked, in my opinion, that was just bad in the <laughs> Legacy line was the helmets. Were yeah. those helmets that came they out? They were awful. All oversized, very plastic, bad yeah. clips. Well, the Hasbro ones that are coming out are way upgraded. They look great. The size, I mean, at least yes. from seeing it on the computer, anyways. They look great. The size of them. So I am very excited about what Hasbro is going to do with the helmet line. I can't wait. So good for Hasbro and good for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers fans and maybe other ones. Now up next, we stumbled upon a booth that had some really cool things, and one of those things were original movie posters. <laughs> I can't tell you how bad I wanted that Batman Returns and Jurassic Park movie poster. Mm -hmm. Those were pivotal movies <laughs> in my childhood and my sort of nerdum growing up being a nerd and becoming one, I guess. I uh, wanted those really bad. If those weren't the advanced posters and we had room, I guess, mm -hmm. I should, more importantly. You know, if they had the actual titles down below, like one of those posters, I probably would have bought them. Of course, they are expensive. Any old vintage movie poster is going to be expensive, but man, I was close from pulling I the trigger I told him. On that I was one. like, do it. Just get it. You're going to regret it. Blah, blah, <laughs> blah. And I was like, dang, I should have bought them. <laughs> <laughs> it was a cool, it was a very cool booth. Even had a first appearance of Harley Quinn in it the comic. It did. So, man. Also, I'd love to have an Independence Day 4 movie poster. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> now, we also stumbled upon some loose vintage Teenage Mutant yes. Ninja Turtles figures. So this is something I've been I've been uh, sort of wrestling with if I want to collect or not. He's been on a rampage of like, I need to collect this, I don't need to collect this, I need to collect this, I don't. So don't let him lie, he's been torn for a while. This one's hard for me because uh, if I think of any toy in my childhood, it's Ninja Turtles, by far Ninja Turtles and then Power Rangers, but uh, you know, this is gonna be, it'd be an expensive venture. I mean, that's oh, just what it yeah. is. It will be an expensive venture because I would go crazy with him. Mm -hmm. I would want them all. Everyone I'd ever have, I would at least want. I'd, a loose would probably be okay because I would like to put them in like a glass shelf and just have them all like stepped up. I didn't I think that'd realize be cool. how pricey they were though. But <laughs> yeah, I do want like some of the originals carded and that's mm -hmm. going to cost me some money. And I do want like box this, like the sewer set. And, and, you know, vehicles and things like this that. This is sounding really expensive. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's what holds me back. That's what is, makes me contemplative about it. But eventually, eventually, I will jump into that. I, I mean, I told you to get these ones, but you were like, no. Nah, well, know. they didn't have Donatello. <laughs> if that was a carded Donatello, I probably would have yeah. bought it. But they didn't have, uh, we went to another booth that there were some carded ones, some uh, vintage carded ones. But they didn't have Donatello. That was my favorite turtle. Mm -hmm. And that's probably what I'll start with, vintage yeah. Donatello carded. And then I'll go into some of the weird ones I liked really bad. So, oh God, this is going to be bad. This is going to be so bad. It's going to be so bad. So after we took a quick trip through the expo to see what people were selling, it was time to judge a custom figure contest. But before that started, Billy was actually given that piece of art of his dad that I mentioned earlier. So let's take a look at this. So Matt has known Billy for about 20 plus years as well. 30? 30? Yeah, 30. Yeah. I've known Billy for... 40 years. Yeah, um, So we all knew Big Bill, and Mark did this great pop for Billy this morning, gave it to him. So we'll have it out here so everybody can walk around and see it. Mark from Nerd Therapy did a wonderful job on it. And John and Matt got together to do something for Billy as well. Those guys, all right. <laughs>
So the figure contest was actually really cool this year. They had some great entries. I, it was tough. It was very, very tough to pick winners on there. Um, but it did get me in the mood to want to go through Artist Alley now. So that's what we're going to do. Now, while we're running through Artist Alley, we stopped off at our buddy's booth, Logan from I Heart Toys. I really like his art. This is a guy that sort of um, meshes urban art, street art, comic art. Uh, it, it's a really cool, like, just style he has. Very detailed, very graphic. He's got custom figures and custom shoe boxes, custom shoes now. <laughs> Uh, you know, he's got all kinds of things, so let me introduce him to you. Hey guys, so I'm here with Logan and I Heart Toys. This is one of my favorite art booths of the whole show, actually. We've been, I've been now at four years. Four years. Four years now we've been coming to this. You were actually the very first guy that said hi to me. And we spoke for like three and a half hours. Three and a, we, just, we just hit it off. Matter of fact, he decided to grow his hair along, and we were going to match. And then he realized I cut my hair, so now we don't match. That's a real shame. Be an individual. <laughs> Be an individual, yeah. So uh, we're going to go over some of his art because I think it is really cool and I think you guys will like it. And I will also put all his information down below. Alrighty, so let's go over some of your art because, again, I'm really, really impressed and I think a lot of people are going to see it. First off, I want to go right into it. You are working on shoes now. Yes. Uh, so sneakers have been a really big part of my life for a long time. Uh, I worked at a Nike store and it... I thought, you know what, sneakers are cool, they're art, they tell a story. And then I found out that you can paint them. Like, hell yeah, I'll put paint on something. <laughs> oh, so yeah. I started working not just painting shoes, but using shoes as part of my brand. It, it tells part of my story and it relates to a lot of people. So speaking of brand, what do you think kind of separates you from other people? Because when I look at your stuff, I see I see a lot of Eastman mm -hmm. with a, you know, a little bit of street art. It, it, that's my whole thing is, you know, Bob Ross always says, I'm, I'm a lazy artist, and so am I. But not in a way that I don't have a work ethic, but what I do is original because it's so much easier for me to just put out. So a lot of the distinctness that comes from me is because I've created all of it in my own head. It comes out of my hands, and that's that's my style. So something that I'm very proud of is having a distinct style that can be seen by anyone and know, hey, that's Logan. Logan did that. Now, another thing that I really like, you're starting into action figures here. This is something I haven't seen in the past years. I didn't know you were making action figures on the card. Yeah. Tell us about these. Uh, so I've got a couple here that used to be my dad's, and I thought, you know what, these need an update. But really, it's because... So hold on, these are your dad's original yes, figures? Yes, these are my dad's 1977 and 1980 Star Wars figures that <laughs> he said, please don't do anything to, so I repainted them. But it, yeah. it brings... And your dad probably doesn't know this. No, he has no idea. Okay. But it, it brings a real toyness to it. I, that's go back to him. He, he picked one up and said, this is, this is a real toy. So I think it's something that I can still create and still have my storytelling pieces too. But everyone knows, oh my god, that's, that's an action figure. They can relate to it. Now, we've known about Bobby. Okay, so yeah. Bobby was the first thing that I ever got. You actually gifted it to me. Love the figure. But now he's getting to something I've never seen before. They almost look like the wind-up little... Uh, like metal tin toys? Yeah. You know, they had the feet, and now they're shoeboxes, Nike shoeboxes. Yes. So this is cool. I think this actually fits with a lot of collectors. You know, because there are, for some reason, I see a lot of overlap in shoe collectors and toy collectors, and we see that in like the, the, the vinyl yes. line. You know, it, some it, of these. It's all about urban art, and it's something that growing up, sneakers were a thing, toys were a thing, but whenever I discovered real sneakers and sneaker heads, they knew about Medicom and all these other toy companies that are so old now, and so making, I call it, it's literally just box top, and it's something that 
because people collect shoes, now they have an approachable way to collect toys that they've never been introduced to. Is that just the disease? Is that just the collecting disease? Very much so. So whether it's a shoe or a toy, it doesn't really matter. You just want to collect things that have colors I, and design. I've always said that everyone collects something. Even you know, think of older people that collect stamps and coins. Everyone perfume collects bottles. something or perfume bottles. Yeah. It's it's once you get one, you're like, I really like this, and it becomes it defines part of your character, part of your, your personality. And for me, my mom knows that shoes are something that I love, and so it's not she doesn't just a pair of shoes. She knows that it's something more to me, and that's what connecting all of that does for me. I like. I think that's. I think that's fun. I think it's interesting. You even have a Bob Ross here that looks awesome. Oh, yeah. uh, Funko Pop fans out here, you can see this is his sort of uh, interpretation. His his, uh, his art mixed with the customized Funko Pop, which I think is really really cool. They even have these uh, little little prints, little art prints. And I see that you mix video games and sports and comics, and then add the shoot or add that sort of look. Like I love the Raphael with the. the the pepperoni pizza behind it. Yes. That is cool. That is just so cool. So yeah, I, I just love everything you're doing here. I was highly impressed this year. Uh, he's really updated his stuff. I mean, it's, it's getting better. I'll tell you that. It's looking great. So tell us where they can find you. Uh, so I am, every, if you're a Bloomington, Indiana local, just come find me everywhere. But if not, if you're around the world, iHeartToys.com, E-Y-E-H-A-R-T, no extra E. Uh, Instagram is my most, I'm always there. It's E-Y-E-H-A-R-T, 2113. It just flows right off the tongue. Uh, <laughs> kind of, yeah. iHeartToys.com, iHeart2113 on Instagram, Bloomington local. That's the best place to get me. I'll give you my number if, you, if I like you enough. <laughs> Great to see Logan again this year. I'll put all his information down below, so make sure you guys check him out. Yeah, now as we were going through Artist Alley, there was this guy doing a live painting session, which I thought was a super cool idea, and he was taking requests from uh, Congoers yeah. and just kind of blasting them out as they <laughs> requested them, and he was doing a Batman one while we were there watching him. It was so cool, we had to buy it. <laughs> yeah, we had to buy it, right? So here's the Batman. Very, very cool. Cool colors. I love it. Um, the one I wanted really bad that I saw on the floor, actually, when I went over to talk to him, I was like, that's kind of cool. That's and he was like, yeah, he said it was for somebody. And I was like, oh. And then, like, five minutes later, I was like, I'll tell you what. If you want it, you can buy it. I was like, all right, I'm taking it. <laughs> and that is Joker. That's pretty cool, right? Look at those I colors. I that one. Yeah, that is really, really I cool. I don't know. Like, he was over there just dancing and moving. <laughs> yeah. When he came over to chit chat with us, he said that he typically dances in a bigger space and paints and stuff. And I'm like, I like to watch you paint. You should yeah. do this more often here. <laughs> it was I, fun. I, I thought this was actually a really cool idea to put in Artist Alley. So props to Billy and Chris for, for mm -hmm. uh, having this idea or whatever. But. It was cool. It was cool for somebody to just kind of walk into Artist Alley and see somebody blah, 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 right. putting something on canvas and then, you know, give it's it to It's a nice though. attraction right at the front of Artist Alley to help pull people into Artist Alley. I thought it was a great yeah. idea. So support your local artists. So the con is about ready to wrap up. We pretty much sold out of everything. So now we're just going to sit back, relax, chat it up a bit, and take Alex on the walk. Think, man. Hmm, what you think? Huh? Having a good time? We're having a good time. Oh, we're oh. stopping. Stopped in your tracks for something, huh? We're stopping. Uh huh. It's interesting, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> you want my hand again? Hmm? Okay. Okay. Let's walk. Alrighty, so we are wrapping it up at Indiana Toy and Comic Expo here in Bloomington, Indiana. It's a great show. Did you have your time? I had so much fun. I'm a little worn out, but I had <laughs> so much fun. It's a lot of fun. Again, it's a smaller convention, but it's it's sort of family orientated. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows each other, and yeah. there's a lot of good people here, and a lot of conversations. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we had a lot of good times. So, Billy and Chris, the guys who put this on, thank you for inviting us here. Uh, we had a blast, what? didn't we, dude? Well, you might not have had a blast. He was. <laughs> you might not have. Hey, there's a smile on there. There's a smile on there. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.